And now we will learn about recording sales receipts. Now you may well ask, when do we make a sale receipt? And the answer is, when the customer pays us immediately for a product or service. You may also ask, what is on a sale receipt? And the answer is, the same information that goes on an invoice. We have the when, the who, the what number, the how many, the what item, the how much. And the, that was the information that we had to put on an invoice. And of course, since a sale receipt is another sales document, it's going to be basically the same information. However, the sale receipt has one more piece of information that the invoice does not. Because the customer paid us when we made a sale receipt, we have to put on the sale receipt the payment method. Now here is what a sale receipt looks like. Notice it has fields for the same information that went on the invoice. The date, the address, the item, the description, the quantity, etc. But what you may also notice is that it has separate buttons that you can click to choose a payment method. So you have to click on one of these things depending on how the customer paid. Let's take a look at an example. Here is a transaction that needs a sale receipt. On January 9, we did 10 video hours for Alan and Alan paid us immediately with cash. We all agree that the money amount of this sale is $3,000. So we earned $3,000 in video and we received $3,000 in cash. Let's predict what the results will be in our trial balance after we record this first sale receipt. Well, we know that video income will increase by $3,000. That's because we just earned $3,000 more in video income. However, we also received $3,000 in cash. Now the problem is our cash account is named cash and bank. But the question here is, is this cash that Alan just gave us physically in the bank? And the answer is no. The answer is, this $3,000 is still in our hand and not in the bank. So it would not be appropriate for the account called cash and bank to show on the trial balance as $3,000. Instead, another account should show up here for $3,000. An account that tells us that we have $3,000 in our hand and not yet in the bank. The name of the account that shows the customer's money that has not yet been brought to the bank is called undeposited funds. Undeposited funds is an account that QuickBooks automatically adds to the chart of accounts. This is where the money for the receipts are recorded until they are deposited into the bank account. So the trial balance will show that we have $3,000 in cash, but it will not say cash in the bank. It will instead say undeposited funds. And notice most of the letters are in lower case, indicating that this is an account that QuickBooks put on the list that we did not. If you remember, all of the accounts that we put are in capital. So now, Let's take a look at how to record the receipt. From the main menu, click Customers, Enter Sale Receipt. Notice the sales receipt has a ribbon just like the invoice window. Let's close it out. Notice the sales receipt has a side panel on the right just like the invoice. Let's close it out. Now let's record the information. The date was January 9. The customer was Customer Allen. The item was video from our items list. The quantity is 10. We know after we type into a field, we always have to push the tab key. Now we have a $3,000 invoice for video. When we click Save and Close, 
We now notice the results in the trial balance are exactly what we expected. Undeposited funds shows up for the first time as $3,000 and video income goes up to $17,400. Here is the next transaction that needs a sale receipt. January 10 did 10 editing for Betty and Betty paid us immediately with check number 8472. Well, we know the money amount is $1,400 for 10 editing hours. When we finish this receipt, editing income will become 8820 and undeposited funds will become 4400 So, let's take a look. Customers enter sales receipts. Notice sales receipt number two comes up. The date we said was January 10. The customer was Betty. The item was editing. And the quantity was 10. We push the tab key after we enter the quantity. And the one more piece of information we have to put is that this is a check. Specifically, this is check number 8472. And we put that in the check number field after we select the payment method of check. When we click save and close, the trial balance numbers become exactly what we expected. Editing income goes up to 8820 and undeposited funds goes up to 4400 as you can see, sales receipts are listed in the general ledger accounts just like invoices were. We have one sale receipt in video income that we made a moment ago. Let's double click the number in video income and see that all the other transactions that were recorded in video income were invoices, but this last one we did just a minute ago is a sale receipt. It still makes video income go up and you can still double click on the sales receipt to go back to the window and modify it however you would like. Let's close out the video income account and let's double click the editing income account. Here are all the transactions recorded in editing income. The one on the very bottom is the last one we just did, receipt number two for January 10th for Betty, making editing income increase by $1,400. And as you can see, the transaction type was sales receipt, and that's what brought the balance up. Please note, all of the sales receipts will be recorded in undeposited funds until we learn later how to deposit the money directly to the bank. So undeposited funds has the two sales receipts that we just made and shows the running balance of 4400 Accounts receivable will never list sales receipts. If we double click accounts receivable, we will get only the eight invoices that we have made so far.